have a little bit of an understanding about sequences, let's talk a little more about the limits of sequences. Let f be some function such that f of n is equal to a of n for all positive integers n. So the idea is while a sequence only exists at these positive numbers, it only exists when n is 1 or 2 or 3, we're going to define the function to be equal to the same thing as the sequence. We're going to define a function to be equal or to have a value everywhere at 1 and a half and at pi and all of these other values. And if we do that and our function that we have defined has a limit as x goes to infinity, then that limit is going to be the same as our sequence limit. However, one of the important things to note that is if whatever, for whatever reason that limit, the first one, the function limit, does not exist, that does not mean that your sequence diverges. It can mean a lot of different things. So let's look at some more complicated limit examples. Let's consider the sequence a sub n, which is equal to 4n squared divided by 1 plus 3n plus 2n squared. Essentially, what we want to do is just take the limit as n goes to infinity. One of the shortcuts that you can learn in Calculus 1 is that if you have polynomials, if the degree on the top is the same as the degree on the bottom, like it is here, we can just look at coefficients. The top has a coefficient of 4, and the leading term on the denominator has a coefficient of 2. So my limit is 2. So the limit of my sequence here is going to be 2. What about the limit as in uh, the, se the sequence b sub n equal to n cubed e to the minus 2n? Well, we do want to take the limit as n goes to infinity of n cubed e to the minus 2n, but if we do that, we get infinity times 0, which is an indeterminate. Instead, we're going to rewrite this as a fraction, n cubed over e to the 2n. We now have infinity over infinity, which is still an indeterminate, but we can now use L'Hopital's rule. We take the derivative of the top to get 3n squared over the derivative of the bottom to get 2e to the 2n. That still doesn't help us, but we can continue L'Hopital's rule. We can take the derivative again and get 6n over 4e to the 2n, and we can take the derivative once more to get 6 over 8e to the 2n. Now, as n increases indefinitely, that denominator is going to get really big, but the top is going to stay the same. So, 6 over a really big number is going to be approaching 0. Next, let's consider this one, c sub n equal to ln n over n. Once again, if we try to take the limit directly of ln of n over n, we do have infinity over infinity. So let's use L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of the natural log is going to be 1 over n, and the derivative of the denominator is going to be 1. So now I have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, which we know is just 0. Next we have d sub n, which is 1 over 1 plus n to the nth power. If we try to take the limit directly of this one, we're going to get 1 to the infinite power, which is another indeterminate. So instead we're going to have to use a variation of L'Hopital's rule, where we set this equal to L. And then we take the natural log of both sides. Properties of natural log say I can move the exponent out front, so I have n ln of 1 plus 1 over n. And on the right, I have the ln of, ln of l. On the left, this is now infinity times 0, which is an indeterminate. So I'm going to have to rewrite it. And I'm going to rewrite this as ln of 1 plus 1 over n, all over n to the negative 1 power. I need to make it a fraction to use L'Hopital's rule, and so I need to move one of these to the denominator, and n to the negative 1 is going to be easier to deal with. I can then take the derivative of the top and the bottom. That's going to be 1 over 1 plus 1 over n, times the derivative of the inside, which is negative n over n to the negative 2. The denominator, negative n to the, n to the negative 2, 
and these are going to cancel. So now I just have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. And this 1 over n is going to tend towards 0, so this limit is equal to 1. But that's not the final answer. Remember, this is ln of l that's equal to 1. So raising both sides to the e power, I get that the limit here is e. For our last one, let's look at the limit of e to the n, which is equal to sine n pi. The limit as n goes to infinity of sine n pi doesn't exist. This thing oscillates forever. However, that does not mean that this limit of the sequence doesn't exist. So let's think about what this sequence looks like. If n is equal to 1, then we have sine of pi, which is 0. If n is 2, sine of 2 pi, which is 0. If n is 3, we have sine of 3 pi, which is 0. And you can continue on. While the limit of the function does not exist, the limit of the sequence in this case is 0.